Wired up? Yes. Well, maybe I can start, uh, All right. Mr. President. Um, you're going to Tokyo at a time when uh, there have been some signs of division and strain in the Western Alliance, I think, over, over Libya and certainly over trade and other foreign policy issues. And I was wondering if you see Tokyo, that there will be a need at Tokyo to make some sort of fence mending with your European allies to keep the alliance in good shape. Well, I'm confident after having gone to several of these summits and uh, having now a, a long, relatively long relationship with the people involved, I am not concerned that we have any serious uh, differences between us or anything that we can't work out. That's really the purpose of the, of the summits is to uh, see that we uh, meet regularly and are able to talk out any problems that arise. And uh, I don't think the differences between us are, are all that great. So uh, I'm optimistic that when we get there, we're going to talk about, as we have before, the things that we believe can be mutually beneficial, better understandings. Uh, we, I know that some of the things that will be discussed is the need for another GATT round of talks to see how we can improve the, uh, that tariff arrangement. And I think very definitely we will be talking about uh, terrorism and how we can cooperatively work closer together to rid the world of this menace, this plague. Uh, Mr. President, are you going uh, to press the Allies for further sanctions against Libya? Although you didn't follow very strictly through with your own oil companies? We, no, I, th I think that what we're going to do is, is take the subject of terrorism and all that we all know about it. We have made great progress with regard to our sharing of intelligence information and that resulted last year in the aborting worldwide of 126 known planned terrorist actions. And so I think we're going to start with uh, what, what can we find that we can all agree upon as a, as a means of dealing uh, with this problem. Uh, if I understand you correctly with regard to uh, the oil situation, were you speaking about uh, the need of the European countries for Libyan oil, or are you speaking about the American-owned American company? American oil company is still in Libya. Uh, yeah, there, there is a, a problem there that I've seen some critics now in the media saying, how can this go forward? What would the alternative be? The alternative uh, would simply be that Gaddafi would confiscate them, and then he'd be better off than he is now. He would own the whole thing instead of simply getting a royalty from oil being produced there. Mr. President, the Prime Minister of Italy, Mr. Bettino Craxi, disagreed with the American bombing on Tripoli, but in the same time he condemned the Libyan state-sponsored terrorism. Craxi said, we need a ceasefire in the Mediterranean Sea, otherwise the situation gets out of control. What do you think about the statements? Well, I agree, and I noticed uh, if, if he's been quoted correctly, I'll be looking forward to talking to him there about this. Uh, he has made it plain that if Italy is the victim of such terrorism, Italy will respond. So uh, we seem to have something in common there. Mr. President, uh, we Japan, uh, Japanese uh, people are very, very uh, honored. And uh, we look forward to welcoming you and other leaders uh, to Tokyo uh, for the summit. 
But uh, actually, uh, we are very much interested in your visiting Indonesia and meeting the ASEAN leaders before coming to Tokyo. And we feel that it's going to be a somewhat of a historic uh, summit in the sense that uh, uh, you and Mr. Nakasone had talked about the summit uh, quite recently. And Mr. Nakasone has said that uh, uh, he and you share uh, the view that uh, you two work together uh, to send a, a message of bright future uh, for the 21st century uh, in the coming summit. Uh, could you uh, share uh, some of your views or so, some of these messages uh, to us? Uh, yes, I do and, and uh, will because um, he and I have discussed this and it is true. I think that the new frontier, yeah. the next frontier in the world is the Pacific Basin. And having been a governor of a state that for 1,500 miles borders on that Pacific, uh, I have long been interested in the development there. And now the ASEAN nations are, as far as our country is concerned, our, our fifth greatest trading partner. And they have made more gains in development than any of us. They're coming along faster in their uh, economic growth than any other part of the world. So I think uh, it is it's most important and that all of us should uh, be looking there for how we can cooperate with them and be of help in their further development and so forth. Mr. President, uh, for France, as you know, there would be the President Mitterrand and the Prime Minister Jacques Chirac Will you consider uh, the Prime Minister as um, an equal, um, as uh, someone you can talk with, or will you just, uh, as before, uh, the other summit, will you uh, uh, talk and speak with uh, and negotiate with Mr. Mitterrand? I think that that is something to be decided by the French government, that uh, the manner in which they come and and uh, how they have arranged their own place in government will be accepted by the rest of us, and certainly we will cooperate with uh, however they have chosen to, uh, to do this, if it is separately or together or, or however. Uh, that's, we'll respect France's right to determine that. Mr. President, I think you'd expect me to talk about free trade today with this uh, in front of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. <clears throat> it looked this morning as though the Canada-U.S. free trade agreement was going to be defeated, and it's been postponed, I gather, till tomorrow morning, but still chancy. Uh, some of us think this is historic, an example for the world uh, in terms of trading, free, liberalizing trade. But I think many people have the impression that the White House has not been very, it's not been a high priority for the White House. So I'd like to ask, you know, how important is, is it to you? What are you willing to do? And what if this is defeated tomorrow? It is extremely important. And uh, we have been, I have been on that telephone a, a great deal. You know our governmental situation and our legislature and all. And I'll be very frank with you and tell you that I am concerned that the possibility, well, that some of the negative votes uh, are not aimed at Canada, but are based on certain political differences here within our own country and our own government. And uh, I have been urging and will continue to do everything I can. Uh, this delay of the vote was a part of our <laughs> struggle to see if we can't be successful. But do everything I can to see that we work this out because here we are, we are the greatest trading partners of each other uh, in the world. And uh, I think that this is all important and that we should continue this and go forward with these negotiations that uh, the Prime Minister and I have talked of. And I regret very much that the, there are some in-house differences that are uh, uh, threatening uh, this arrangement. 
Could I go back to Libya again, Mr. President? Your, your spokesman yeah. this morning Be said... Be careful when you go there. <laughs> I don't mean <know>. physically. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe get give me a ride. <laughs> um, your spokesman this morning said that, uh, uh, I think in your name, that the United States welcomed the action that the Europeans took yesterday in restricting Libyan diplomats further. Yes. Uh, but that more was needed. And I was wondering what sort of more that meant. Does it mean economic sanctions still? Is that the sort of thing you're going to ask in Tokyo? Well, again, as I say, I hate to dwell on one thing or another. I would, we know that this is going to be discussed, and I want to see what we can all uh, come together on. But there's no question about the seriousness of this, and there's no question about uh, serious open dedication to the use of terrorism. As a matter of fact, they have called it a war, and uh, granted that they have aimed the war, uh, according to Gaddafi's words, more specifically at us. But right now, and one of the things that we knew before we made our, took our action against them, was that we have definite information on at least 35 planned terrorist actions and they are particularly aimed at Americans, but they take place in all of the other countries. And therefore, the, the violence is not going to be confined to just a target. For example, the, we know that in France, the expulsion of those uh, Libyan diplomats was because we knew of an action that had been planned and even the weapons distributed. And what that was going to mean was that when people, the only place where America was the target was the locale, our embassy. But outside the embassy where the people line up to come in to get visas, now those won't be Americans. They don't need visas to come to America. So those would be citizens of France and other countries that would be there. And that action was simply to mow down with grenades and small arms fire these people, men, women, and children that would be lined up there seeking visas. So there isn't any one of us that is free from the, from the, th the threat. Uh, in the Rome and Vienna airport slaughters, which I think Mr. Gaddafi called a noble deed, well, there was only a minority of Americans there they happened to be in front of American airline ticket offices, but, uh, or ticket counters, but these were people of, of several other countries. So it is an international problem, and um, I think that we can continue the cooperation we've had and, and enlarge upon it and bring this to an end. Mr. President, concerning economic policy, the main uh, issue of the Tokyo summit should be, perhaps. Um, the German economy uh, grew faster than the American last year and is expected to grow, uh, to be the fastest growing um, under the, among the big industrial countries this year. So do you have still any complaints about German economic policy? No, we, we're delighted to see this. We're pleased about our currencies coming more into line uh, with each other. I think it is fair to say, and true to say, that, that uh, uh, in the economic recovery, which all of us were suffering, uh, or the economic decline, uh, we seemed to take off first, and we, we were the first in bringing about the recovery and the expansion that we've had. But uh, you really can't be prosperous unless all your trading partners are too. And so we've, we're delighted to see now that the recovery has spread around to the other nations in the world and to our other trading partners. And uh, I think it's all to the good. We're delighted. May I follow up just You're a short? Uh, would you uh, like to see uh, the Deutsche Mark and other European currencies is, uh, rising still further in comparison to the dollar? Because you just told us they are now coming in line. Yes. And if it is, and if it is done yes. as the result, so yes, you would like yes, to rise if it is, if it is done as just the result of the, the uh, 
economic growth and the recovery of the economies of, of the other countries. So you're expecting the Deutsche Mark rising um, further because it, uh, I don't think anyone can before? predict uh, what, where it will come to, but I know the same thing has happened with the yen in comparison to our dollar. It, I believe now, is at the, uh, is at the highest point it has, ever, it has ever been. But this makes for better trade for all of us. Mr. President, again on terrorism, Italy is, uh, as you know, on the front line in the Mediterranean. Uh, this morning on the, uh, in the New York Times, in a column, uh, someone said that uh, uh, the Italian government, um, before the uh, strike on Tripoli, uh, were saying, and Mr. Kraxis were saying, uh, strike harder, we can say it publicly, but uh, do it. That is true or not? Well, I don't think I should be commenting on what someone might have said uh, confidentially uh, or not, but uh, uh, we're, good, we're good friends, and, I, uh, and as I say, I think that we probably will find in Tokyo that we all are in more agreement than uh, some of the uh, impressions that have been, uh, been given. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, we have produced a huge program, the so-called uh, Japan program, in the form of uh, nearly $50 billion uh, current account surplus, uh, balance of payment surplus. And uh, maybe there are some disagreements, even among the uh, <coughs> Western allies, I mean, between the United States and Europe, about the uh, uh, efficacy of the uh, policy, new policy, which is now being uh, propagated by Mr. Nakazone and his cabinet. And uh, what would you expect the uh, Tokyo summit uh, deal with this uh, huge uh, current uh, <coughs> balance of payment surplus program, so-called Japan program? And on the other hand, you see there is a, another huge problem in the form of the accumulating deficit or other debts in the third world countries. So uh, I would rather you know, expect or I would even hope that you, Mr. President, has, have some nice <coughs> sort of Reagan plan up your sleeve to solve <laughs> this sort of things at a straw. Yeah. Have you got? Well, I think we're all better off yeah. if we go forward with helping the lesser developed nations, and they are the debtor nations now, but the manner in which they should be able to pay their debts is to have, again, an increase in their economy and have them become more self-sustaining, self-sufficient. And I think that uh, your Prime Minister and I are agreed on the need for uh, the nations like those in the summit to help and not help just in the old way of handouts, but to help them develop their economies and so they can be more self-sufficient. And uh, there's, I think we're very much agreed on that. Now, the other part of your question, if I, if I understood correctly, were you, you were talking about the plan for Japan to become more an importing uh, nation. And also uh, in the form of uh, the, uh, you know, financial aid and something like that to the uh, third world countries who are suffering from the accumulating debts? Well, Japan has been in the forefront as a nation in, in, in such, such help. And I think we all, all our nations have, have tried to, to do this. And as the, to the other problem about uh, more of an importing nation, yes, I think that this, uh, and this makes for actually better economics uh, for your country as well uh, to do this because as it is now and probably as a result of some of your taxing policies uh, the incentive is more to saving than it is to consuming well it is as the standard of living goes up and there is more consumption and more need to consume then there's more industry both ways and uh, you have to remember that if if that means Japan buying from outside and importing, but then that makes those they import from better able to buy in turn. And we all, we all benefit. 
<coughs> going on, uh, Mr. President, uh, on those uh, trade matters, um, how do you see the trade talks with your Euro European partners in Tokyo, with this uh, war, trade war starting uh, here in the state uh, against European community? No. no wait a minute. How do um, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. <coughs> On these trade, uh, trade issues, you know, um, USA has started since two or three months now a kind of war against uh, EEC countries um, on trade uh, issues. And uh, I really wonder how you can be really optimistic on the trade issue in the Tokyo summit with this background uh, between the community, European community and uh, USA. Well, the thing that we believe in and are uh, trying to sell worldwide is the need for free trade and open markets. And free trade must be fair trade. If, if you're trading with a trading partner who has protective tariffs or limits and quotas and so forth, uh, that isn't free trade because it isn't fair trade. And we had an experience, the world did as a matter of fact, due to us, back in the 30s, the 1930s in the Great Depression. And some in our country here thought that a great protective tariff was the answer to our depression. So a thing called, for the two authors of it, the Smoot-Hawley Tariff was put into effect. And it spread the depression worldwide. And we never want to make that mistake again. I'm, I'm opposed to protectionism. Now it is true the European community does practice some. For example, uh, by Spain and Portugal's entry into the European community, what happened there was under their rules, their rules violate the GATT agreement because those rules say that now Spain and Portugal must buy the agricultural products they have been buying from the United States. They must buy them from other members of the community. Well, this is like taking a billion dollars in trade away from our American farmers. And uh, we feel uh, there's got to be some compensation for this uh, so that we can, and the, the best way would be for us to all review, and that's what we keep trying to do at the Economic Summit, to all review uh, where we're restricting trade at the same time that we want to <coughs> We want to sell, we don't want to buy. And uh, much of this, uh, we've, we've made a number of bilateral agreements. We're working bilaterally right now with Japan on this. But I think, I just, my own feeling is that every bit of economic history shows that free and open commerce is beneficial to all. And when you get in trying to adjust it and restrict it with various agreements, that's when you get in trouble. Because protectionism is a two-way street. You may say, well, like, I vetoed a bill that our Congress passed. And it was a bill that would have had some protectionism here in our country for two or three different products. And they were trying to say that, well, this would mean more jobs in those industries for Americans. But nobody counts the jobs over here in the other industries that you lose when the other country retaliates. So that's why I vetoed the bill, and they didn't override my veto. But this is what we need to talk about with the European community, and we are going to be discussing with them. What do you hope to accomplish in Tokyo? And specifically, if you can't get a free trade agreement with Canada, how can you hope to have this kind of liberalization that you've just been talking about? Well, I'm not going to quit on one vote. <laughs> We're going to keep trying would, for this. Would you? Yes. Oh, yes. Of course. I, it's, it's the right thing to do, and uh, we'll keep after it. And I'll be pleased if you will quote me correctly on that to your people. <laughs> give it to me and I'll quote it. <laughs> All right, no, I mean, we're not going to give up yes. on it. Mr. Um, President, uh, uh, by supporting you uh, on the uh, attack on Libya, Mrs. Thatcher 
has got herself into quite a lot of domestic political problems. In fact, one of the opposition has accused her of turning the British bulldog into a Reagan poodle. And I was wondering what you would have to say to her if you can help her in any way on that in Tokyo, for example, by discussing the future possible use of American bases in Oh, Britain. yes. You bet I'll be discussing it, but you know something? I have to tell you that I've never known of a time when the English bulldog is safer than it is with Margaret Thatcher, where she is. And uh, she is not allowing anyone, anything in England, to become an American poodle. I remember one of your countrymen said something, and I have come to agree with it above all. And that was on my last trip there, when he very enthusiastically hit his fist in his hand and said to me, Margaret Thatcher is the greatest man in England. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that to offend the ladies. I think he was trying to be complimentary, but uh, no, I have the greatest respect for her. And I'm sorry that her very courageous action uh, caused her the problems that it did. But at the same time that she has my sympathy uh, she also has my conviction that um, she is well able to take care of herself and her country. Mr. President, this morning's Wall Street Journal reported that you would like to encourage kind of a Marshall Fund for the Middle East in Tokyo. Is that correct? And who should come up with the money, in your opinion? <laughs> <laughs> well, all of us. <laughs> uh, all of us. Okay. I don't know that we, we actually call it that, but in all the efforts to bring about peace in the Middle East, uh, this idea that the Prime Minister Perez broached to us of why don't we enlarge the circle and why don't we bring in all the countries of the Middle East, all the moderate Arab states themselves, and look at the underlying problems there, economic and otherwise, and then say, wait a minute, uh, instead of just sitting here in one room trying to bring a few countries together on a peace treaty, why don't we see how all together, and they and with whatever outside help is needed from all the rest of us, uh, in Europe and here in the Western world and Japan, how can we maybe bring about this same kind of thing we've been talking here about other parts of the world of economic improvement, elimination of things that cause differences between various states, and enhancing the security of all, uh, not just one or two. And uh, I told our people, I said this, uh, let us look at this and let us start talking to our friends and allies about what we can see together that might solve this. Because for too long a time, the Middle, the Middle East has been uh, the touch point that, that could set off uh, world conflicts. Mr. President, we've got a group of congressmen that are pushing oh. their heels out in the lobby. I, I hate to cut some of you short, but oh. I don't think we've got an alternative. Oh. Go ahead and get your congressman well. in here. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right.